In this video, I'd like to walk you through an overview of your Canvas course. You might be using a Canvas course to provide part of your seminary experience to your students and just want to walk you through what you will see when you first log into your course once it has been created in WISE by the Seminaries and Institutes Administrative Assistant. Um, so what we see when we land on, on this page is this is the course homepage. This is what the students see when they log in. Now one thing you got to understand is you are a teacher in this class and your students are students in their in your class and so you will see things that students do not see and so sometimes when you think students should be able to see something they might not be able to see it and so the easiest way to tell what your students can see is this little button over here that says student view. I'm going to go ahead and click on student view here and then what will come up is this pink outline telling us that we're looking at things that the students will see and so there's some things over here the students can see that uh, you uh, as a teacher uh, will be able to that they can't see. So I'm going to leave student view or you can hit reset. I'm going to leave student view again. And so this is, that's an easy way for you to know what your students can and cannot see. Now this home page, this home page you can edit and you can change. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit right here. And what you will see when you go here you'll see what is called a rich text editor and this like uh, a word document or a blog uh, if you've ever used those you can go ahead and change and modify whatever you delete from this page <laughs> and type in your own stuff you will lose and so you might not want to do that right at first but that's where you can edit those things there and hit cancel here um, other things to notice on here, on the left hand side, um, this inbox right here is your messaging. So you can send messages to students in your course there. Um, a calendar is where you can add dates to the calendar of things to be done. Um, uh, but you'll notice right here in your default homepage it says go to lesson modules right here. And here is another uh, link to that same thing. So if the students click modules here or here, they end up going to the same place. I'm going to go ahead and click on go to modules. While this loads, modules is where all of the course content resides. All of the lessons are housed within the modules. And what a module is, is if you can imagine for every lesson there is a folder. And uh, for example, this is the Introduction to Online Seminary uh, module. And inside this module, you can see there are 14 different activities or pages. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this uh, page here. And you'll notice that it has now collapsed and you cannot see all of, the, all of those different modules there. In each module, there are different types of activities. So right here, this first one is a page. You can see this one is a quiz. Um, this one down here is a discussion. So within a module or a lesson, um, there are different types of activities. Let's look at uh, what would be the first lesson of a second uh, semester. And it is uh, August of 2020. We are starting the second half of the Book of Mormon, uh, mirroring the Come, Follow Me schedule. And you'll notice here is a page, and the first page is always a, a devotional. There's a class discussion here, a quiz here, another couple discussions. So within this lesson of Alma 17, it looks like there's 18 separate pages for that. And you'll notice... Uh, on the left-hand side, as a teacher, you'll notice there is a link on the left-hand side to quizzes. So all of the quizzes, again, the, the rocket is a quiz. If you want to see the quizzes in this course, you can go to quizzes there. All the pages, you can go to pages, and all the discussions, you can go to discussions there. So I'm going to click on discussions and just show you what it looks like. And what will load are all of the discussions that are in all of the lessons for uh, the second half of the Book of Mormon. And again, you can know this number right here, 81, 
That means lesson 81 in the teacher manual. And so this is a list of all of the different discussions there. If you want to look at all of the pages, in modules, how they're organized is they're organized by lesson or folder. And so again, this folder is the Introduction to Online Seminary folder. This folder is Book of Mormon Lesson 81, Alma 17. This folder or module is Lesson 82. And so that's how the content is organized. I'm going to go back to, to the home page just again so that we can go over how to get back to it. Now what you'll notice here in the video is this page, the modules page, takes a long time to load. And as a teacher, you are loading 80 lessons when you come to this page. And so it will take a while for it to load. And I'll show you how you can control what lessons are available to students and what are not. So again, I'm going to go back to the home page. And again, I got to modules by clicking on here. Or students can be trained to click right here into modules. One other thing to notice before we talk about uh, making things available to students and which lessons you want to make available to them, right here, when you receive your course, it's going to be unpublished, meaning it's not visible to the students that are in the class. If you want to see a list of the students that should be able to access the course, you can go to the People page right there. And so once you're ready for students to look at your course, uh, and when they log in, they can see it, you can go ahead and hit publish right there. That needs to happen for the students to be able to see anything. So let's go ahead and go to modules here. And again, I'm going to have to let this load because it's loading 80, uh, 80 modules or folders worth of lessons here. And as this loads, I'll just share this with you briefly. You are in charge of controlling what lessons your students have access to and which ones they do not. Um, depending on how you're using your Canvas site, sometimes your students might be doing one lesson in Canvas a week, or they might be doing four lessons a week. And so how do you control which lessons uh, are available and which ones are not? You'll need to first have a schedule of which lessons you're going to do throughout a semester, and which days you'll be teaching in person or via Zoom, and which days that the students will be doing a Canvas class. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to collapse these so it's a little bit easier to see for a second here. So I'm collapsing these and I've noticed for me personally uh, if I take the time right now to go through and collapse all these my my modules page will load faster than if I left them all open. Now what you'll notice right here if a student logs in the only thing that they'll be able to see when they come to the modules page is this introduction to online seminary. And you can see this green, do you see that green check right there? That means published. Now if I want to not make it visible to students, I would click that. I'm going to go ahead and click it again to publish that. I'm going to go ahead and publish this one here, this first lesson. And so let's say uh, they're going to do this on a Monday, they're going to do this on a Tuesday. My uh, in-person class or my Zoom class will meet on Wednesday, so we will do lesson 18 in Zoom, and then lesson Thursday they'll be doing via Canvas, and Friday they'll be doing a lesson via Canvas. And so this is Monday, Tuesday, this is when we do Zoom, Thursday and Friday. So that's how you'll decide which ones to make available and which ones to hide. So I'm going to go back to my course homepage, and to show you what it looks like for a student now that I have those four lessons available. I'm going to go ahead and click on student view here. And now I'm in student view and again a student can click here or they can click here. I'm going to go ahead and click go to lesson modules and this page will load and it only shows the lessons that are available to them. It doesn't have all 80. Again you determine what is visible to the students, what is what is not. And you'll notice for the students, um, conditions have been set up. So they like for this page, the students, when they come to this page, they have to mark as done the devotional. And so I'll show you what that looks like. Up at the top right hand corner, for them, it will say mark as done once they're done. They have to click on that uh, usually. Um, 
So this is the introduction page here. Let me show you an, a lesson. For example, if this is the first page, and the first page is always a devotional for them to do. And you'll notice for the devotional pages, when the students, if they want to move to the next page, they need to mark as done right here. And once they mark as done, uh, they're allowed to move on to the next page, and it's visible. And uh, this is a discussion, and they hit reply um, there. So in the introduction module, I'm going to go back to modules here. In the introduction modules, it will walk them through those, those things. And you'll notice that there are little check marks once the students complete the requirements on those page pages. So in this case, they need to contribute to that class discussion to be able to move on to the next page. So there are conditions for each page to be met. Um, and, and it will take a little while for them to get used to those um, uh, requirements. If you click on home, it will go back to the course home page, or you could click on the name of the course up here, and it will go back to the course home page. So that, uh, again, this is still in student view. For me to see what a teacher sees, I need to go to student view. Um, just a few other items on this left-hand side. This is the announcements page. This is where you will create announcements, and they'll pop up here. Right now, if you notice, there's an I crossed out. That means the students can't see it. And uh, once you make uh, an announcement, it will be visible to students. There's other things here that you might not want to be visible to students, so like Office 365 or collaborations or rubrics or any of those things. How you make those things visible or not is right here in settings. And so I'll go to that real quick. And right here under navigation, um, I do not want Office 365 to be visible. I do not want collaborations to be visible. I do not want a net, a rubrics to be visible. Um, but the rest of those things, um, I probably do want visible to them, so I'll hit save. And you'll notice uh, now all of those things are not visible to the students. I could come back to the course homepage, turn on student view, and now they only see those things available to them. I might remove the teacher app. Uh, those type, You have that kind of control over the site. When you log into this page as a teacher, I'm going to leave student view here. When you log into this page, things for you to review uh, and give feedback on will show up here on this side for you as a teacher once you're in the course. It's in your uh, dashboard there, and you'll see what things that uh, require your attention. Now, just one last note. What students see and what you see when you log in with the Canvas Student app, or there is also a Canvas Teacher app, it is very different. And so um, uh, you'll need to, to log in uh, with the teacher app to kind of see what's available to them there. Or, and you'll, if you could have a student log into the Canvas student app, what they see there is also very different. And so that's one of the hard things of, of knowing what device your students are using and what they can see when they log in. But in general, for to start things out, it would be best to do most of this work from a desktop computer where you can see the same things that I have showed you here. Thanks.